does it feel to be the top seed of the slam? Uh, I don't feel that any different really to, to, to normal to be honest. How do you feel coming into this tournament? Was the preparation this winter as good as you wanted? Yeah, I think it went went pretty well. Um, Doha went went well. Played some some good stuff, especially at the end of the the event. Um, yeah, I mean the off season. I would have liked to have been a couple of weeks a uh, couple of weeks longer, but um, you know I made sure I got enough uh, enough rest um, and just you know I'll get hopefully a bit of time in in February. Uh, uh, as well, um, but uh, yeah, I did did some good training over in Miami. Uh, there's a lot of good players over there for for practice, so um, it went well. You're, you're playing um, middle of the afternoon on Monday when the forecast okay. is is pretty hot. W would you have preferred to have had a bit more practice time in hotter conditions? Um, well. Yeah, but there's not there's not really much else you, you can do about it. I mean, in I mean, obviously in, in Doha the the conditions are pretty cool. Uh, you're playing most of your matches in the evening, but you know, also if you if you do well here, um, you know, you will often play at least three matches in the evening, sometimes four. So you know, it's good good practice for that but obviously the the day matches here can get you know brutally hot um you know but i think maybe that the hotman cup is is probably where you get the the best uh, conditions or most similar conditions to to here um to start the year um but yeah i'll just have to to deal with it just like uh, all of the other players as well and tactical awareness and preparing for big matches um well, in terms of uh, tactical awareness, I would sort of study, watch video um, to learn about things, um, you know, that I, I could do better or things that have worked uh, worked well when obviously I don't, don't do so much of that sort of on, on the practice court. But, you know, there's certain patterns of play that you, you practice that hopefully will help against certain players and... Um, and then also there's things that are extremely important to your game and what makes your game effective, you know, not just against one player, but against the, the whole tour. And, you know, I feel like my movement and my, my speed around the court is a very important part of my game. And that's something that I try to work on all of the time without thinking about, you know, other players. But, of course, there's certain things you, you, you would practice that you'd, what would help you against um, the, the top guys for sure. What do you make of your next opponent? You, you played him here a few years ago. Yeah, I don't remember loads about um, that match. We, we played on Margaret Court, um, but I don't remember too much uh, about the match. I saw him uh, playing a bit at the, the US Open. He had a good run there uh, a few months ago. Um, you know, I also had a very tight match with, with Warinka there, so. He, uh, you know, he's not easy. He fights very hard. He's got a great attitude. Um, plays predominantly from the back of the court and and moves moves well. Uh, so he doesn't give you any uh, too many too many free points. But um, I mean, I've only played him once. I've never practiced with him. Um, and that match was it was it was a long time ago. It would have been I don't know two thousand eight nine something like that. Roger was asked earlier if he could remember what it was like when he gained the number one ranking and he said he <coughs> felt that other people treated him differently. Is that something that you've experienced or have you had any feelings like that? Um, no, not not really. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, maybe... Uh, I've, yeah, I, I haven't really noticed it. I mean, it, it kind of happened for me right at the end of the right at the end of the year. So I haven't been kind of on the tour much um, as a number one player. Just one one week really in in Doha. Um, so I, I haven't noticed it yet. I don't know if that, if that will come over over time if I'm able to to stay there or not. But um, yeah, I mean, it's only been really a few 
few weeks um, around the, the tour with that ranking. I haven't noticed much, much change. Andy, looking back 12 months now, how much was what was going on at home with Kim affecting you during the tournament here? Uh, yeah, it was it was a hard, it was a tough tournament. Um, yeah, ob yeah, obviously, a situation with you know Kim and the the baby coming was tough, and then with uh, what happened with with Nigel kind of during the event made it really kind of awkward because there was times where I was thinking like you know want to go home, but then also you know my father in law was here and in hospital so it was like <laughs> I want to be at home for the birth but then I'm not just going to sort of leave whilst my father-in-law is also uh, in, in hospital so it was yeah it was it was tough and certainly not a position I would want to, to put myself in again or, or my wife or any of my family really. Roger, and Novak used to say that once you've reached the number one, you, you have to work double as hard to stay there. Do you see it like this? Oh. <laughs> I hope not. Um, <laughs> I hope not. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I do think that... I do think it is a mindset thing, um, because I think it could be quite easy that once you get to number one that you think, well, actually... You know, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. But the reality is, in sport, is that things obviously keep moving on. The game will get better. Um, I'll obviously get older. The young guys will continue to to improve, and also, you know, Novak and Roger and Stan and Rafa and all the guys at the top are still going to be be wanting to to get there. Um, so that's why, you know, having someone like Ivan and my team who, who's been in that position before and, and knows what that's, uh, what that's like um, has been important that I need to continue to improve. Um, I for sure need to keep working hard. I don't think necessarily working harder than, than I have in the past, um, but just having the mindset that I need to keep getting better and, and trying to improve my, my game and any weaknesses that are in my game. Uh, to try and get rid of them. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. Andy, your record here is, is really good, but you haven't actually won the thing. Do you feel like you're in a really good position right now to, to go one step further? Um, yeah, I mean, I, look, I obviously feel pretty confident after the, the way that the last season um, Last season finished, um, and I, and I do love it here. I love the conditions. I have played really well here over the years, and just haven't managed to obviously get get over the final hurdle. Um, but yeah, I don't. I think I'm in a decent position uh, for sure to, uh, to to do it. I think I have a chance to win here. Obviously, nothing's guaranteed, but um, yeah. Well, why not? I'm playing. I'm playing well. Practice has been good. I, I feel healthy and. Um, yeah, I'll give it a good shot. Last one. Are there any other players called you Sir yet? Um, well, yeah, but not um, not genuinely. Um, I don't think. Just on that, Andy, the host broadcaster is going to refer to you as Sir Andy in the broadcast, at least reportedly. I mean, is that how does that make you feel? Um, I mean, I'm absolutely more than happy just being Andy. That's enough um, for me and yeah if they call me Andy that's cool I'd be happy with that <laughs>